Hello, Brabanters. I'm your podcast host, Joe Worley. Today, I'll be sharing a story of an equine veterinarian, Dr. Hernando Plata, and his business partner and wife, Lisa Martin Plata. They're both founding members of the European Brabant Registry of America, with long and storied careers in the equine industry. After I share their story, I'll do a flying lead change to discuss the importance of registration documentation. So let's get to it. This is the Brabant Bulletin, brought to you by the European Brabant Registry of America, where people, passion, and preservation are our mission. The EBRA values and appreciates its members and has profiled a new member every quarter in the Brabant Bulletin since it launched. One of our earlier member spotlights featured founding members Dr. Hernando Plata Madrid and Lisa Martin Plata, an equine powerhouse couple in Versailles, Kentucky. It's an incredible story of love and horses, so I dug into our archives to share their special story with you. Vibrant colors of yellow, orange, and red stretch across the night sky, signifying the dawn of a new day, while fog gently rolls across deep green, dew-drenched hills. A winding driveway between two lush pastures terminates at a Dutch-style barn, where the clanking of buckets and a woman's voice can be heard, emanating from its vertically hung planks. A sign on the drive out front reads, Silver Meadow Farm. It's just past 6 a.m. Kentucky time, and a dark-haired woman is toiling away, feeding six hungry gentle giants, all the while talking to them like old friends. Given her short stature, the draft horses who tower over her seem to consciously avoid crowding her. They quietly follow alongside as she turns them out to the fields after breakfast. When the last horse is released, she pulls a cell from her pocket making a call as she hikes back up to the drive to the two-story blue house on the hill. Just checking in, she says, slightly winded with a hint of fatigue in her voice. For most married couples, a 6.30 a.m. call would be odd. However, for Dr. Hernando Plata Madrid and Lisa Martin, it's everyday life. Together, they operate their own equine veterinary practice, Plata LLC, where they service hundreds of horses across the greater Versailles, Kentucky area. By 6.30 a.m., Dr. Plata is on his third farm visit of the day, and Lisa's own busy schedule is well underway, too. I really like it when she calls me, Dr. Plata says, smiling. She'll call me three or four times a day just to say hi. She seems to know when I'm stressed and tired, especially during peak breeding season, when I'm treating 75 to 100 mares a day. It's hard, but hearing her voice, I love that. With a final, love ya. Lisa ends the call and stuffs her phone in her pocket as she walks into the house. Their youngest child of three, Griffin, who's 21, sits waiting for breakfast. It's treatment day for him, and he knows the routine. Breakfast, shower, occupational therapy. The horses, the clients, the kids, they all rely on Lisa. Perhaps no one more than Griffin, who has autism spectrum disorder, is nonverbal and requires home care 24-7. Griffin's therapy sessions aren't just beneficial for him. They provide Lisa a window of opportunity to step away from caregiving so she can manage the business, generate invoices, and return clients' calls. If she's lucky, Lisa might have time to call and catch up with her eldest daughter, Gabrielle, 24, who just completed her master's in clinical mental health counseling at Ohio State, or her middle child, Mackenzie, 23, who is working towards her master's degree in secondary education at the University of Kentucky. Like Hernando and Lisa, the girls stay busy, but staying in touch is priority one. Also, like their parents, both young women are smart, educated, and driven. When Lisa was their age back in Norfolk, Virginia, she was pursuing a dual bachelor's in criminal justice and psychology from Old Dominion University. While also managing a barn of hunter jumpers and dressage horses, she never formally put her degrees to use after graduation, but it turns out her psychology studies proved useful when it came to managing foals and later raising children. It was at the barn she managed where she and Hernando first clapped his eyes on each other. I could see she was a party animal, Hermano recalls, laughing a bit. I had just finished my master's in reproduction and internship at the University of Missouri. We took a position in my friend's practice in Virginia. Our clinic was contracted to service her barn, so that's where we met. She was always nice to me, though, despite my English language deficiency. Dr. Hernando Plata Madrid grew up near Bogota, Colombia and spent most of his time on his family's cattle farm and assisting his father, Dr. Jamie Plata Alvarez, 
as he treated his equine clients. When not working or attending classes at La Salle University, Fernando went on week-long riding treks, traversing the Colombian countryside on the backs of his maternal grandfather's Colombian Criollo horses, stopping at night to sleep under the stars from tree-hung hammocks and eat hearty meals provided by the farmers and landowners. I didn't do any showing when I was young like Lisa, explains Hernando. In Colombia, you must be part of a club, and those were for the more affluent types. I learned horsemanship from the Laneros, Colombian cowboys on the farm. Before completing his doctor of veterinary medicine degree, Hernando made a trip to the USA in search of draft horses to bring back to Colombia to improve their family farm's heavy horse stock. At the time, they had a smattering of drafty type horses whose lineage was a likely mix of Percheron, Clydesdale, American Belgian, and indigenous breeds. In 1980, I visited Ann Harper's Milkwood Farm to see some Brabants, remembers Hernando. Her stallion, Babar, Babar de Wolverton, was unlike any other draft horse I'd seen before. His size and movement was impressive. We purchased one of his grandsons from Pennsylvania and brought him back to Columbia to be our herd sire. He covered our mares and was leased to some other farms from time to time. He was a nice horse. By the time Hernando met Lisa in 1997, his passion for draft horses, particularly Brabant's, grew into an obsession. However, the demands of his growing veterinary career meant he only had time to care for other people's horses in those days. Like most horse-crazed people, that didn't stop him from window shopping. He stayed in touch with Ann Harper over the years and built relationships with other Brabant breeders across North America. Brabants were always his thing, remembers Lisa, smirking a bit. I like my warm bloods. Surprisingly, Hernando and Lisa's preferences for horse breeds seemed to mirror their personalities perfectly. Lisa, being warm blood, like her pursuits, outgoing and bold, tackling challenges head on. There's no obstacle too high. On the other hand, Hernando takes a more draft horse mentality approach to life. He's always positive, with a steady pace and a nose to the grind approach to work. In the end, it was Lisa's warm blood, Hanoverian mare, Hannah, who brought the two together. Though Lisa initially found Hernando to be a stick in the mud, and Hernando perceived Lisa to be a bit frivolous, these two opposites ultimately did attract. She wanted her mare bred, proclaims Hernando in a mock exasperated tone, and she just had to micromanage everything. We did get her bred, interjects Lisa, smirking. Hernando and Lisa were married, January 28, 1998. In two days after saying I do, they moved into Lexington, Kentucky. Hernando became a resident veterinarian at a large breeding farm, practicing internal and reproductive medicine while Lisa managed the home front. In rapid succession, the newlyweds welcomed their three children, Gabrielle, Mackenzie, and Griffin. From then on, life went from busy to hectic. Once the two eldest children were grown and off to college, Hernando and Lisa realized they had time and opportunity to start their own practice. So in 2014, they founded Plata LLC. Two years later, they purchased land, and their first two grade Brabant mares, Salsa and Chipotle, given their last name Plata, means silver in Spanish. And in the rolling quicksilver fog of the Kentucky countryside, they named their farm Silver Meadows. Fernando's dream of owning and breeding Brabant was coming to fruition, and his partner in life, Lisa, was right there making that dream a reality too. In 2018, they bred and settled both of their mares using imported frozen semen from Matteo van Reitenhoff, resulting in two beautiful blue roan foals. Later that year, they imported three yearlings. Two were fillies, Lydia van Huyve, Ruth, and Nicole van Winkenbossen, and the third, a stud colt, Victor van de Fosse Eugenia. Life on the farm has been a roller coaster of peaks and valleys, joy and strife, life and death. Their oldest mare, Salsa, was laid to rest at the ripe age of 27. She left behind an incredible filly, Havanera, who still resides at Silver Meadows today. Salsa's passing also left an opening in the pasture for Hernando and Lisa to import from Europe once again. In 2021, they brought a mature mare, Laura Van de Fassa Eugenia, and quarantined her on property. Though Lisa had always been more of a sports horse gal, her heart was quickly won over by the loving, eager-to-please Brabant draft horses, a breed both she and Hernando now strive to preserve and share with others. Neither Hernando nor Lisa ride anymore, but they still gain fulfillment from their horses and derive satisfaction in knowing their contributions to the endangered breed 
by producing quality, healthy, purebred Brabants. It's important to both of us that this breed survives, says Hernando. We want to ensure they're here for our grandkids and their grandkids. Our priority is the Brabant's preservation and health. In 2020, Hernando and Lisa, along with a few others, developed a horse registry whose sole purpose would be to preserve and promote the purebred Brabant. And in October 2021, the European Brabant Registry of America was established. We wanted to create a place where people could be proud of owning and breeding 100% Brabants, explained Lisa a place where we wouldn't be scrutinized for our preferences for purebreds. Though we're just a couple of years into the program, the EBRA is a fledgling community where we can all celebrate our horses, no matter their percentage. We're happy and support each other. Lisa hits send on an email response to the Australian man who just purchased their 2022 colt, Silver Meadow Archibald Haven Nando, and imported him halfway across the globe. Her smartphone alarm rings, reminding her that Griffin's session is almost complete. She turns off her work computer and makes her way to the kitchen to prep lunch. As she lays out the spread, she gives Hernando another ring. He's on the road again, this time diverted to an emergency call. For Hernando and his assistant, there are no lunch breaks. Each vet packs their own snacks and beverages, which they hastily consume in the truck as they hurry from farm to farm. For Hernando, the prime breeding and foaling season is winding down which means Silver Meadow's farm breeding and foaling season is just ramping up. By design, he and Lisa prefer to breed their horses later in the season to better accommodate their hectic vet practice and schedule in the spring. While on the phone, Lisa and Hernando work out a time where they'll meet that evening to collect their stallion victor to access the semen for the start of the breeding season. Then they chat about an outside mare's client's request for shipped cooled semen later in the week and discuss the need to change the cryogenic shipping container so they can ship imported frozen semen from Doris van der Mullenhoof to a different mare owner. The call wraps interruptly with, Love ya, as Hernando arrives at the emergency call. Lisa turns her attention back to lunch. She and Griffin eat and go through their afternoon routines until another smartphone alarm sounds in her pocket and a reminder on the screen that reads, Evening Chores. Together, she and Griffin make their way down to the barn as the mares gallop in from the pastures, eager to eat. Griffin climbs into his hammock that stretched across the main center aisle of the barn as Lisa brings the horses in for feeding. Knowingly, each horse delicately passes Griffin, some stopping to sniff his hair and others nuzzling his lap, seeking scratches. His face lights up, a smile forms. Lisa pauses for a moment to watch the exchange. There's a lesson here, she remarks internally. One doesn't need words to express love. It's demonstrated through acts of kindness and love, just like the bond between our horses and Griffin. If we humans could be more like our horses, the world would be a better place. Once again, the sky turns a vibrant gradient of yellow, orange, and red, signifying the end of that day. Buckets clank as the contented sounds of horses chewing hay reverberates through the rafters. Lisa flips on the barn lights and the sun disappears completely, and the headlights of Fernando's truck come into view. While most couples are lounging in their pajamas at home, Hernando and Lisa are just starting their work at Silver Meadows Farm. However, you won't hear them complain. After all, they're together, doing what they love, for a breed they love, with who they love. What an incredible love story. And timely, too, with Valentine's Day not too long ago. I would be remiss if I didn't share that Dr. Plata is currently battling cancer. At the moment, he's too ill to practice veterinary medicine and Lisa now finds herself the caregiver of two men she loves, her son Griffin and her beloved husband. With the Plata LLC vet practice on hiatus why Dr. Plata focuses on treatment, the family's sole source of income has also been suspended. With the mounting medical bills and standard living expenses, plus the lack of time and energy needed to run a horse farm, the Platas made the heartbreaking decision to rehome their herd of Brabant draft horses, the ones they worked so hard to build. Rest assured, they selected excellent new pastures for their babies and will keep tabs on them for the foreseeable future. Myself and the entire EBRA family wish Hernando and Lisa strength and love during this difficult period. And to their children, we want you to know that we're here for you, for whatever you need. Speaking of needs, the horse community is rallying around the Platas by raising money to support them. You can visit GoFundMe and search Hernando Plata Madrid DVM and donate. Your donation will go a long way, so please give what you can. 
And now a shout out to our sponsor, Hilton Herbs. The European Brabant Registry of America is proudly supported by Hilton Herbs, a family-run business dedicated to producing top quality herbal feed supplements and healthcare products for horses. Our big Brabants can be prone to stocking up and one surefire way to promote lymphatic drainage is by sprinkling on some of Hilton Herbs special cleavers and marigold blend. You can get your supply at www.hiltonherbs.com backslash US. And don't forget, EBRA members, we've got a discount code on the portal for you. All right, Brabanters, let's talk about the importance of registration and documentation. As a registry, we are committed to the preservation and promotion of the European Brabant Draft Horse. A big part of this mission is keeping the registry database to document European Brabant horses in North, Central, and South America and their ownership transfers over time. This information helps to track the health of the breed, growth, and decline over time, as well as providing members with essential pedigree information when making breeding decisions. You'll often find us encouraging horse owners to register their horses, but perhaps you're left wondering, what's in it for me? Let's take a look at some of the benefits of getting registration papers on your Brabant horses. Value. While papers don't make a horse good, they do provide valuable information and the fact most buyers will pay more for a registered horse. For the Brabant breed in particular, with the popularity and rarity of the horses, there are plenty of unscrupulous sellers who will market anything roan and drafty as a Brabant. So having the paperwork to prove that claim is one way to capture a premium when selling a horse. Documentation. Even if you don't plan to sell the horse, the registration certificate lists important information about the horse including their pedigree, birth date, color, markings, and other means of identification, such as microchips. It can be hard to keep track of these things over time, so having them certified and listed in one place helps to avoid confusion over things such as the age or breeding of a horse. Proof of ownership. The registration certificate lists the current owner of the horse per the most recent transfer of registration, and this is the person who is able to sign off on breeding documents, transfers, etc., Keeping registration transfers up to date is incredibly important. Eligibility. In order to compete in many shows or to be a part of EBRA's Breed Ambassador Program, the horse must be registered. Offspring registration. Unfortunately, there are many horses out there at the moment with undocumented Brabant lineage, and although they possess the character and phenotype of the breed, they are unable to be registered without proof of their pedigree. Registering foundation stock is the best way to ensure that future offspring can be added to the books and receive the recognition they deserve. While paperwork may not be enjoyable, the benefits of registering a horse are worth the time and effort. We strive to make the process as simple as possible. Providing an online registration form as well as the option to complete a fillable PDF, which you can download from our website at www.europeanbrabant.com. Just a reminder to our international listeners, we recently opened our stud book to countries who do not have dedicated European Brabant breed societies and or registries of their own. So be sure to check out our website and see what you need to get your horse registered. If you have any questions along the way, we are always happy to help. Simply email registrar at europeanbrabant.com or call 724-605-3680. Well, Brabanters, that wraps up episode 13 of the Brabant Bulletin. Until next time, don't forget that to ride a Brabant is to fly without wings. <laughs>